A thali is an Indian meal served on one platter. This is how we ate dinner growing up as kids, and this is still how we eat dinner to this day. In New Delhi, a thali traditionally consists of a dal, a veggie or meat, raita, roti, achar, and green chilies and onions. My name is Akshay Bardwaj. My family is from New Delhi, India, and this is how I make a North Indian thali dinner. So for our first component, we're making dal, which translates to lentils. Rough chop of the onions to start with. Red onions are more common in New Delhi cuisine. We're gonna be adding one garlic into the lentils. We just wanna rinse the dal, and that's the starch that's being released. I've rinsed the lentils, and now we're gonna put it in the pressure cooker. I'm adding water to it. And this pressure cooker is about the same age as me. This pressure cooker comes from my family. My grandmother gave it to my mom. What it does is it seals in the steam while you're cooking. It cuts down the cooking time by about at least 25 to 50%. This is the tricky part. My mom makes it look much easier than I do. We're just gonna lock it in here and now it's airtight. So now that the steam is released, we're gonna just move this off to the side and allow the rest of the lentils to cook in its own pressure and steam. We're making our thurka. A thurka is an infusion of spices, the tempering of spices. I'm adding my onions and garlic. The onions and the garlic are close to being brown. We're gonna add in our spices and let those roast in the pan as well. About two spoons of coriander. We're adding some chili powder and turmeric. The turmeric is gonna help in giving the dal the final color that you'll see, as well as floral aroma. So now that we see that the oil is separating from the onions and garlic that we've uh, sauteed, we know that it's ready to be infused in the dal. More turmeric. We added the lentils and we're just incorporating the onion garlic mixture. You can make it to the consistency that you want. So if you want it to be this soupy, that's perfectly fine. And if you do want something a little more thicker, that's also perfectly fine. We're just gonna finish with a little bit of chopped cilantro. Yeah, it's perfect. So now I'm gonna make my favorite dish, which is gobi. Traditionally in India, it is accompanied by potatoes as well. So the dish's name is usually aloo gobi, potatoes and cauliflower. My personal preference is just having the cauliflower on its own. In New Delhi, there are farms up north in Punjab. They have over there cauliflower, potatoes, eggplant. That's why you see it in a lot of uh, dishes in New Delhi when it comes to the vegetables. We're using a neutral oil, like a canola oil for this. And now that the oil is hot, we're gonna add in our cumin seeds. The cumin seeds are gonna give a nice earthy, warm flavor. Ginger garlic paste. Ginger garlic is a staple of Indian cooking, whether it's a paste or it's minced. The paste form we use for marinations like chicken tikka or lamb chops or other kebabs. Coriander adds a nice citrus note to the dish. Chili powder, you can put in as much chili powder as you want depending on the heat level that you want. The turmeric is also playing an important role for flavor as well as giving color to the cauliflower. Spices mixed with oils help preserve these dishes to last longer. So you'll see a lot of curries, lentils, those can be left in the fridge for days to upwards of a week. And the flavor actually does enhance. So once again, we are looking for the oil to kind of separate from the spices. That might take like a minute or two. We're gonna add our cauliflower in now. Salt also. Cauliflower is about 80 to 90% water. We're just gonna place a lid on top and let it cook for about 10 to 15 minutes. We can see all the water that the cauliflower has released. We're just gonna give this a little bit of a stir. If it's crunchy or if it's soft, depending on how you like the cauliflower, you're free to choose. I'm gonna season with a little bit of kasuri methi, which is also dry fenugreek leaves. 80% of the production of fenugreek comes from India. It does have a little citrusy flavor, so as you would season something with fresh lemon juice or lime juice at the end, you wanna do the same with the fenugreek. Finish with some fresh cilantro that we chopped. All right, the gobi's all finished. So raita is a yogurt-based condiment, usually used as a side dish for breakfast, lunch, or dinner. Day is the curdled milk mixed with yogurt, so it keeps its bacteria. The whey is also kept in it, is unstrained. Now I'm gonna add just a little bit of milk. The milk is just for consistency purposes. Raita is actually literally the first thing I've ever made in my life. My mom used to let me make it when I was like four years old. 
and I would always be snacking on the bundi. It's just very addicting once you start eating it. So I'm adding cumin powder, black salt or kala namak. This is volcanic salt that is from the area of the Himalayas. So they have a little more of a sulfur content and that sulfur flavor gives a little pungency as well as acidity. This is the black salt in its whole form. You just need a little bit because it's gonna overpower the other spices. Red chili powder, crushed black pepper. So now I'm just gonna whisk our raita. So we're just looking for a kind of a smooth consistency. It's perfect. So we're making roti now. Roti is an unleavened bread. This is the base for a myriad of other breads. It's about a two to one ratio of flour to water. This is stone ground whole wheat flour. I'm Punjabi, so we tend to eat roti more often. So in North India, wheat is produced over there. So there's more roti and pratas and breads that are eaten in North India versus rice being the predominant grain that's eaten in the south. That's the reason why our thali doesn't have any rice. You just want to knead it for a couple of uh, minutes and just make sure that the salt has spread out. And we're just gonna add a little bit of oil now so that it will provide a little bit more of a shine and uh, coloring when we're cooking it on the stove top. You don't really have to let it rest too long. You just wanna place a damp towel on top of it so that it doesn't dry out the dough and that there's no crust that forms. This is the board that we roll the roti on. It's called a chakla. It was my grandmother's who passed it down to my mother in 1990. This chakla is older than me. When it comes to the hierarchy of the family, this gets more love and respect than I do. So I'm just making the balls right now. Now that we have formulated the roti balls, we are going to dip it in some more whole wheat flour so that it doesn't stick onto my hands. So I'm just rotating it and pressing down with my fingers. Here you have the balin, which is the rolling pin. The goal is to make it the same thickness throughout. So I'm just gonna take a little bit more flour on both sides. So this is pretty much ready. So now I'm just gonna slap this a little bit. I'm getting out some of the excess flour that was on the dough. And then we have here our tava, which is a flat skillet. What we wanna start seeing on the roti itself is it to start bubbling. This is kind of the traditional method of cooking the rotis. It takes a little while to get hot, but once it is hot, it'll maintain that temperature. So once you start seeing bubbles on one side, you wanna flip it over to the next side and we want to see it to start to brown and to color. The roti is done cooking, we put it in the roti dabba and we put a little rag in it to cover it so that it can remain moist and it doesn't dry up. So you can buy prepackaged rotis and to be very honest, they're not bad at all. So this is perfect, absolute perfect color. This is done. So we've arrived at our final destination, it is time to plate. We have our thali and our katoris. Here we have our dal. Everything should be served hot. Our cauliflower. Now we're gonna add our bundi to the raita. Bundi being the crispy chickpeas. You mix the bundi in the raita before serving it so that you can get it in every bite. Couple more on top because I love it so much. And now we have raw onions. These onions are great for texture and adding a little crunch and sweetness. One green chili, just like the onions, it adds a nice crunch. So I typically eat this meal with a char, also known as pickles. It gives great sour, spicy, and sweet notes. And lastly, we have our roti. You wanna leave your roti in the basket as long as possible to maintain its temperature. And this is my New Delhi Thali. So when it comes to eating, everyone has their own preferences. This is the way I eat the thali. So I'm just ripping the roti, and now I'm just gonna grab a piece of the cauliflower and then dip it into my raita and my dal, and now I'm gonna eat it. So that really is, in my opinion, the perfect bite. You have a lot of bold flavors that are built in through each of these three dishes. The cauliflower has a little bit of spice to it. The dal with the onions and the garlic has a lot of flavor as well. The yogurt just does a perfect job of bringing balance to the entire dish. No forks, no knives, no spoons, no utensils. Eating with my hands, that's the way to do it. We tend to just use our right hand when eating. It's just better functionality wise since you want to keep your left hand clean, whether it's to drink water or uh, uh, nowadays, maybe check your phone. The messier, the better is what I always say. 
I have really fond memories of eating a thali just like this while I was growing up. I just have always loved eating out of this, whether it's eating on the dining table or maybe watching a Yankee game with my dad and mom. It's that freshness, it's that boldness of flavor, it's those textures, those spices. And you know when you see this that you're gonna be full and you're gonna be happy at the end of the meal.